Hi, honors, chemistry, it's Miss Johnson. Teaching you from my living room, thanks to Corona. Ugh. So today we're gonna to talk about stoichiometry and you guys use stoichiometry all the time. You don't even know it, but you do. Uh, stoichiometry is like mm, what we use for cooking, right? Like if you're making, <laughs> well, now here's like a real life scenario. Let's say you have limited food around your house and you know, like the recipe requires you to have three eggs, one box of cake mix, and a half a cup of oil, but you really only have one egg, what would you do to the rest of your recipe, right? You would divide by three or multiply by one third. Like, it's kind of like, hmm, what's the ingredient that we have the smallest amount of? That's what we're gonna use to do all of our calculations. That's what stoichiometry is. So today, that's what we're gonna talk about. And we're gonna do homework problems. And don't forget to post them on uh, Teams. And if Teams is too tough, that's okay. Just email me. Um, so here we go. So remember how I said that this is like for cooking, right? Um, pretend like our recipe is a chemical reaction because that's really what it is. Um, you know, your recipe doesn't perhaps look like a chemical reaction, but it really is. Like, it might not look like a cake when you put it in the oven. It might look like eggs, flour, and oil, and sugar, and food coloring, and all that, you know, stuff. But when you take it out of the oven, it looks like a delicious cake, and all you got to do is frost it. Um, but that's a chemical reaction. Uh, it looks different before, and it looks different after. And we could just draw our little reaction arrow to show that. Um, so let's start thinking in that way. Like, let's start thinking chemical reaction. Uh, and you guys know all about chemical reactions because we just finished that unit. So you remember that whatever goes on the left, that's your reactants. Whatever goes on the right is your products because that's what we're making. And the arrow is telling our audience there is a change happening. It's going to be different. All the stuff on the left is different after it goes through the change and becomes the things on the right, okay? So to talk about stoichiometry, let's use a real life example. Um, I like to make cheese, uh, cheese and cracker sandwiches. So I like to use two pieces of crackers. Ta -da! And then I like, oh, uh-oh, one piece of cheese in the middle. And I thought I had more, like, ta-da, there's my cheese cracker sandwich. Um, so you can see right here, like, I have, like, crackers in excess. There's so many crackers, I'm going to have crackers left over. But what's really going to determine how many cracker sandwiches I can make? The number of cheese slices. And the reason why is because I only have two of them, oh, which is unfortunate for me because... I can only make two. So, like, this is what our reaction would be. We would have four crackers, two slices of cheese, and then on the other side of the reaction arrow, ta-da! <laughs> you would have these. <laughs> well, this one, hold on. Okay, there. This is what would be on the other side of the reaction arrow. And that's stoichiometry, not pad, right? Uh, instead of using crackers and food, we're going to use chemicals. And it's just a little tiny change, so don't even worry about it. Okay. So what's so great about stoichiometry? Everything. Um, it gives us a very good idea of exactly how much stuff we can make based on the number of ingredients or reactants we have. Um, and to do that, we're going to use a mole ratio. So the reactants go on the left, the products go on the right, just like we've always talked about. And that mole ratio is going to come from the coefficients. And in this case, it would be four and two. But without stoichiometry, our world would be even crazier. It would be even more uncertain than it already is. Um, stoich lets us uh, know how far we can travel on however many gallons of gas we have in the tank. And it also tells how much carbon monoxide we're pumping into the ozone. Boo! Um, I wish we lived in a perfect world, don't you? <laughs> but we don't. Um, and if we did, that would be ideal. 
which means it's your own imagination's version of perfect. But in chemistry, ideal conditions mean perfect conditions, the perfect temperature, the perfect pressure, the perfect everything. And that's going to show us how much we can make of our theoretical yield. Um, so here's the steps that we're going to use. We're going to convert grams into moles, step number one. Step number two, we're going to insert the mole ratio. And remember how I showed you the coefficients by each reactant and product? That's where we get the mole ratio from. And then number three, we're going to convert from moles back into grams. Whoa. 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 <laughs> All right, example number one, how many grams of water can I make from 36 grams of oxygen? So the first thing we gotta do is write the reaction and you guys know how to do that after unit six and you gotta balance it, all of that stuff. Um, the number that they give us in the question, we're gonna write that on the very first line of the train track. And this is our very first step. We're going to convert grams to moles. So that's where 36 grams of oxygen go. And using the periodic table, you know how to get that 31.998 number. So then our second step, this is where we're going to put in the mole ratio. And I circled in green where that comes from. In this problem, we're comparing water and oxygen gas. Okay, I want to know how much water I can make at the end from how much oxygen I'm going to use as a reactant. So that is where the mole ratio comes from. It comes from these coefficients right here. Okie doke. Now, since I'm only comparing oxygen and water, I'm only going to use the coefficients from oxygen and water. So that's the second step. Not terrible. Comparing oxygen and water. And when you set it up, you want to set it up to where your diagonals are the same so that they'll cancel out. That's why I have one mole of oxygen on the bottom because the one mole of oxygen over 31.998 will cancel that one out. So now we're going to do step number three, and that's where we're going to convert back into grams. So we went from 36 grams of oxygen into moles of oxygen. Then I put in my mole ratio with moles of oxygen on the bottom so that those diagonals will cancel out. And I put what I'm comparing it to on the top, moles of water, two moles of water. So my next step is I need to go back from moles into grams. And that 18.015 number, I got that using the periodic table. Okay. So look, all of the diagonals will end up canceling out. And since I didn't have enough room to write all of the numbers we multiply on the top and all the numbers we multiply on the bottom, I did it right beneath. Ooh, it's going pretty fast. Sorry, you might have to push pause. But see, it's not terrible. Just look at Chewy. He's so happy in his little blinker. Okay, next example. How many grams of ammonia can we make from 25.5 grams of hydrogen gas? So once again, we're gonna write the number on the very first part of the line, 25.5 grams of hydrogen gas. And in this problem, we're comparing hydrogen gas and ammonia. So that's where we're gonna do step number two, where we put in the mole ratio. Now from my reaction, it's gonna take three moles of hydrogen gas to make two moles of ammonia. And I'm setting this up to where my hydrogen gas boxes will cancel out. I made them diagonals. So it's very important to read the problems. You got to know what two things you're comparing. All right, step number three. You're going to go from moles back into grams. Using the periodic table, I added nitrogen, which was 14.007 to three hydrogens, which are each 1.008. You add all those together, you get 17.031 grams. So now push pause and see if you can get the answer. I'll wait. Just kidding. <laughs> so did you get 143.615? I hope you did. And your answer 
the unit that you should have is grams of ammonia. Okay, now we're going to practice, but you're going to write everything down. So we're going to use the same reaction that we used for that last problem with the ammonia. And this time, I want you to figure out how many grams of ammonia we can make from 55.43 grams of nitrogen gas. So I want you to set up your own train tracks. See if you can do it. And then check to see if you got it right. And if you're still thinking about it, I'll go, you can push pause right now and get everything set up. But in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna show you the solution. And here it is, woo! So I set everything up. You can see that my first step going from grams to moles is in red. My mole ratio is in green. Going from moles back into grams is in blue. I multiplied all the numbers on the top. Then I multiplied all the numbers on the bottom. Then I divide the top number by the bottom number. And that is how I got 67.294. If your number is a little bit different, it's probably because I used my Apple phone. Ugh. But hey, look at this guy. You love it. Don't give up. Chemists try. Have a good night.